Hello, hello. It's Christmas Eve. So Merry Christmas to anyone who celebrates. Uh, the kids are a little bit busy at the moment, so I thought I would use that time to sneak away and uh, do a little painting. And I thought I would share that with you today. So uh, I'm just going to be painting on this little uh, canvas board from Canson. And I've got some fluid acrylics here I'm using, Opus brand. That's my local art store here in Victoria. Um, you can use any brand. This is not, I just, I like these, but um, use whatever your favorite is. And I'm using fluid acrylics. Again, you can use a heavy body. You can use that sort of that student grade, um, this kind of acrylic too. Uh, more expensive paint is great, but you don't have to use it. You know, start with what you've got. Um, all right, so I'm gonna use a little bit of this. Actually, no, let's do something different. <laughs> I'm gonna use some phthalo turquoise. Put that out on my palette, and I am going to mix it with a little bit of burnt sienna. And that burnt sienna, it's almost an orangey brown, which is a little bit uh, risky, of course, because Blue and orange are complementary colors, and if you mix complementary colors together, you run the risk of getting mud. But I do know that if you mix the turquoise with the sienna, they're just off of blue and orange just enough. When you mix them together, the sienna deepens the blue or the turquoise to this deep, dark, it's almost inky. I don't know. Let's let it run out a bit here so you can see. Look at this beautiful green shade that comes from that. Gorgeous, right? You'd never know. This is why I'm all about practice and play because, you know, unless someone tells you and unless you're willing to take risks, you'll never know some of the beautiful colors you can create with your paint. So practice and play. And that's another good reason not to always buy the most expensive paint right off the bat because again then you're going to think oh this paint is super precious you might not experiment and play with it in a way that really helps you to reach those breakthroughs with your art so i'm going to cover this whole board with this gorgeous gorgeous green I am just loving it. It sort of reminds me actually of like a Christmas. It's not that bright Christmas green, but it's got that sort of deep winter green kind of energy to it. I think we'll do a little something with magenta on this piece too. And it's going to be, maybe have a little bit of a Christmas feel to it. All right. This board is just soaking up this paint. But I'm going to get the whole thing covered. There we go. So I'm not worried about brush strokes in there. Anything like that is just going to make it the end result more painterly, more pretty. I'm not worried about it. Oh, and I should have mentioned, I'm just using a three quarter inch filbert brush. Uh, this one is well loved. I've used it for quite a while now um, and I'm hard on my brushes, uh, but it's just from the dollar store. Um, I did, I was chatting with someone recently that said, oh, you know, I watched your videos and I bought a brush at the dollar store and all of the hairs fell out of it. And that is a risk when you're buying cheap brushes. Um, so if you buy some brushes, you can't really do this in the store, but if once you bought brushes, before you create your masterpiece, give those bristles a little bit of a tug. And like, this is a pretty great quality, this particular one, as far as like keeping those bristles. I don't lose bristles out of these guys. So um, I can't remember the brand name, or but they really were just from the dollar store. So, um, a great option so we want to work quickly i don't want this paint to completely dry i've got the heat on so i better work quick i'm gonna grab my brush off camera here i've got my big bucket of white gesso you can use white um titanium white acrylic oh it looks like i've got a little bit of purple in my brush i don't want that i can get this a bit, a bit better of a rinse Nice and clean. Get some fresh white. There we go. That's better. Okay. Now I want to just create flowers on here. So I'm going to do a large, that's kind of, I'm not going to think about this too much, but I'm just going to come in 
And look at the way, see the way the white mixes, because this isn't dry, the white is gonna mix with the paint below. So I'm just, you know, I have a lot of practice, so I'm just able to kind of come in and put shapes where I think I'll want those flowers, but there we go. See, so I've just got sort of the indication of two big blooms here, and then maybe we've got another sort of medium-sized one there, and then some blossoms. And this is just the first layer. I'm gonna take it and we'll, we'll just keep adding to it. So I'm gonna grab a fresh brush, another one of these little filbert guys, and I'm gonna get some fresh white, because now I just wanna add some more highlights over top of this. So I'm just gonna come in. Oh, this is still pretty wet and thick. So it's not gonna let me just yet. What I might need to do is set this aside. But before I do that, I'm just gonna All right, so I think that's as much as I can do with that sort of green color there because I want the next layers. I love the variants of white and darker colors in there. Um, I want my next colors to lay over top of this, so I'm gonna have to let this dry. But what we can do while we're kind of waiting for that white to dry is we can create some greenery in here. So I'm gonna grab this color. This is quinacridone gold. It's often called quinacridone nickel azo gold, but for the brand I buy, they just call it quinacridone gold. And I'm just going to put a little bit of that out on my palette. And I want to grab a fresh, clean brush. I'm going to get a fresh paper towel to make sure my brush is nice and clean. All right. So it doesn't really matter what size. This is just the one I've grabbed. So this color, it's got a bit of transparency to it. It's sort of, as you can see, it's sort of a yellow, almost like a butterscotchy yellow color, really deep yellow. What's really great because it's got that transparency and because this is probably not quite dry yet, we can kind of give, we come in around our flowers. I'm doing sort of quick strokes with my brush. Around the flowers though and when the, the transparent gold goes over top of the green base it gives us another shade of green and isn't that beautiful there we go and then I can also just dip just the very tips of my bristles in there into the white and that's just going to give it a little bit of opacity. And I can come back in and actually do some little highlights in there as well. I'm giving these sort of wispy leaves but by doing this little, whoops, <laughs> this little flick with my brush. And it gives us these sort of like wispy shaped leaves. Kind of makes me feel again like that sort of feeling of winter which is what i like for this piece okay so i'd love to just be able to paint an entire painting and not pause uh, but i can't <laughs> one of the most important things is to know when to let your layers dry and in this case these layers need to dry i just thought of one quick thing i'm going to do before i let them dry i'm going to grab my turquoise and a bit of my magenta again I'm gonna get a clean brush, nice and clean brush. I'm gonna mix those colors in there. Oh, you know what I just realized? I meant to grab my turquoise and my burnt sienna, but you know what, happy mistakes or happy accidents. Remember what Bob Ross used to say? Uh, the quinacridone magenta is a great color and it, with the turquoise, it's gonna mix and create this dark bluey purple shade. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna use that to create the indication of a center, just by lightly tapping inside the center of that big flower there. 
And then we'll do the same thing over here, but this one we're gonna have make it look as though that flower is facing that way a bit. And we do that by making it closer to that side. And then we can also do that down here. And you know what, let's use a little bit of that. I know I said I was gonna pause, but let's use a little bit of that to make some dots in amongst these blossoms here. Wow, so pretty. Okay, now <laughs> we are gonna set this aside to dry and I will be right back in the video, but in my world, it's gonna be a few minutes while this dries. Okay, <laughs> so this is all nice and dry now. Got some little spots on there. That's okay. All right, so moving on. I grab, I like to give this piece some highlights. So I'm going to grab a smaller, one of these smaller, uh, fill, it's from that same package, filbert brush, and a little bit of my white. And then I'm just going to come in and just really loose. Just add some highlights to some of these. Flowers here. No stress. Just wherever I feel like it. A little bit more down there. Okay, I actually also thought it would be really nice to add in a little bit more of this magenta. Now this is gonna work, it's gonna look really cohesive because I accidentally, that happy accident, got that magenta in with that blue there, creating this deeper, more navy blue against the turquoise teal color. Um, the magenta, I just feel like it's gonna give it this beautiful sort of winter berry feel. The tiny, tiny bit of white on my little brush here, I'm gonna keep that because that little bit of white is gonna to help to make the magenta just slightly more opaque. It's gonna lighten the color a little bit, but not too much. So I'm not adding any more, just what was on my brush, just a touch. And I'm gonna to load up my little brush here. And what if we, you know, what if up here, these were some berries? You know what, I'm gonna get a little bit more. Actually, you know, I'm gonna use a tiny bit of that color we're using before, a little bit more magenta in there. Just to give this sort of deep, deeper shade here. Those are really bright. Okay, that's a bit better. So, what if we just, maybe down here we've got some of these. You know, maybe this is sort of a winter bouquet see those berries in the winter I'm not not sure what they're called um, I can just kind of put the indication of those little berries throughout it's not pretty there we go. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to brush around here. I thought I had a nice small brush. I'm just going to grab one. I've got this nice little round brush from my arsenal over there. And I'm just going to We've got some white. I'm just going to dip in the white. What if we made some little, I love to make, now this is a cheaper dollar store brush, so it's got a little string there. <laughs> um, I just love to put little dots in the center of my flowers. I don't really know why, to be honest, because it doesn't necessarily make it look like a realistic flower, but when I'm painting flowers, it's more about that sort of feeling of flowers than actual realism. And 
I love to put some little dots. Here, maybe I'll have these up here. Kind of gives the indication that maybe some other little buds are growing. And I just feel like those tiny little, it's sort of got that sort of effervescent kind of feeling to it. Oh, that kind of got a little mucky there. Just gonna get a little bit more on my brush. And let's just drop a little bit more in there. Maybe a little bit extra. Let's do the same thing down here. A little extra. go okay and now I've got this little brush and I've got some of this green here a little bit of white left on my palette I'm just gonna come in and I'd love to just add a little more variance into some of these petal shapes so I'm just gonna mix some There we go. Okay, one last little thing I noticed as I was going along. I got some weird sort of yeah, it's time to wash my water. <laughs> got some weird sort of spots, like white spots happened to get up there when I was going along. So I'm just gonna take my brush. I'm gonna get a little bit more sienna. Oh, a little bit more turquoise. Now this is why I work on many pa paintings at once usually because I end up inevitably using too much paint on my palette <laughs> and it needs somewhere to go. Oh there we go. That's better. And then maybe I'm not going to come in I'm coming close to my flowers. I don't want to go right next to them. I'm just going to use my finger. I know that that's frowned upon by some. I'll wash my hands. All right, maybe a little bit more of that darkness down here. There we go. All right. So, our little winter bouquet is done. Um, that was fun. I hope you had fun too. And I hope wherever you are, whatever your situation is over the holidays, that you find some time to have a little bit of, bit of fun and find peace and joy. And I hope you feel loved. Um, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Bye for now.